guys, welcome back to Medical Coding with Blue. Today's episode is all about how to learn evaluation and management. If you are brand new to my channel, welcome. I am Blue, I'm a medical coder. Okay guys, so first things first. <laughs> This is not going to be a demonstration on evaluation and management, meaning I'm not going to put up a scenario and we're not going to go through it step by step. Because anytime I have done that in the past on YouTube, it just was not received well and people showed that they were ungrateful. So I said, fine, I'm only going to give this to my Patreons then because my Patreons are supporting me. And so I'm going to give this to them. Now, with that said, um, I, what I am going to do today is show you how to use the book and what book I recommend to learn evaluation and management. Now, it is very important that you understand evaluation and management is not as scary as a lot of people make it out to be. What it is, is understanding what the rules are and what does each level mean and what, where are you, um, where are you at? What setting are you in? Are you in an outpatient clinic? Are you uh, at uh, the ER, you know, where are you coding for? And that's where it's going to be able to help you to understand which levels you need to be looking at. Okay. So with all that said, if you are interested in joining my Patreon channel, I do post uh, E&M scenarios there. I have in the past and I'm doing them a little bit more, uh, but that's not the only thing that I post. Okay. So don't think that that's all you're going to get when you're there because it's mostly like, um, uh, quizzes for coding and like puzzles and things like that to just trying to help you learn uh, medical terminology and things. The link for my Patreon channel is in the description box below. We do meet once a month live for a study hall. So if anybody has any questions about those E&M scenarios I posted, they can certainly bring them <laughs> there at that time. And that will kind of help to help them to learn. At least I think so. And so uh, I also have been putting together an evaluation and management class. Now, it is not ready for public consumption just yet. It is still in the beta phase. Uh, I'm going through it right now with my Patreons. I have a group of my Patreons that are going through this beta class with me. Um, but what I have done is I've made it into a 10 class, uh, E&M class, where I give people homework to do. You have homework, you have to show up to these classes. That is the one thing that I made very clear when I started the class is that I will give you homework. You will have to complete it <laughs> and you will have to show up to the class because my goal um, by the end of the class is that everybody has a good grasp of evaluation and management. I think it's working so far, <laughs> but we'll see uh, when the class ends. I have uh three more classes to go with them. And so I think it's worked out quite well, but I have been giving them scenarios to work through and then we've been working um, together to, to sort them out and how do we get to this level and that kind of thing. So if you're interested in that, um, I'm probably going to present it out for public consumption maybe in the fall. Um, I need to kind of work with some things in the background, but we'll, we'll see. We'll, we'll see how that goes. But just know that if you're going to get into my any of my classes, I will expect you to do the work. I will expect you to show up because no one has time for tomfoolery. Because if you are not showing up to class and that means you wanna show up to the next class and then you're gonna bring everybody back five paces instead of moving forward, okay? So just something you gotta know, all right. So with that said, I'm gonna show you how to start looking at this book because I think that's important for you guys to know. When people start scaring other people that, oh, evaluation and management is so hard. It is not hard, guys. It is not hard, especially when you learn to look at the book, you learn to read it um, and research through it, and you learn how to find your references in this book, you're good to go. And the other book I'm going to show you is the workbook that I highly recommend. And again, it's entirely up to you. Everybody has a different way of learning evaluation and management, but this is the way that I have been showing my Patreons to learn. Okay, so with that said, here we go. <laughs> so here's your 2024 um, CPT book. Now, the other thing I will say is this. You can download for free just by Googling. Don't ask me to put a, one, a link anywhere because you can Google these things, guys. Google the Evaluation and Management Leveling Tool 2024, and you'll see a lot of PDFs pop up. You can download those, you can look at them, so that way you can start getting an idea of what's happening in that 
um, in that tool. Okay. And that tool is meant to help you to kind of recognize where you are in terms of the level. Okay. So here, I'm going to get to the beginning part. So we have this green section here. It's lined in red. And every time I've asked anybody who says, Blue, I don't understand evaluation and management. Have you read the guidelines in the CPT manual? It's always been a resounding no. <laughs> they have not done that. You have to read this in its entirety. Now, it may be a few times that you got to read it, but you have to read it. Because this is going to be everything that you need to know. Is this, this is going to tell you about new versus established. It's going to tell you about when new versus established actually does apply. Because you're going to get into some situations like in the ER. New versus established does not apply to the ER. Why? Because you don't go to the ER for follow-up care. You go to the ER to be taken care of in an emergent situation, right? And so again, the rules of new versus established do not apply in the ER. Other clinics, the, your your regular coding, your coding clinic, <laughs> your regular clinic settings, yes, it does. You know, your outpatient clinic, yes, it does apply. So you got to know what it means, and you have to know like the time and basically stuff like that. So you have to learn it from here, and then it's going to tell you about the split or shared services. It's going to tell you about uh, multiple evaluation and management services on the same date. There's a lot of things that are important for you to understand, okay? And this is right here is going to explain a lot of it. Services reported separately, history or examination, uh, levels of E&M service, guidelines for selecting levels of service based on medical decision making. Medical decision making is by far and away <laughs> the most troubling for a lot of people. Not understanding what the different levels mean, straightforward, low, moderate, high, not understanding what those mean it really throws a lot of people. And there's many different websites that will give you examples more of what each level means, but you have to know this as well. When it comes to right here where it says it's listed, it's going to tell you like this is the level of MDM. You have to get two out of these three boxes to line up, okay? And this first column is gonna be the number and or complexity of problems addressed at the encounter, all right? Now, sometimes people are coming in with a lot of, of chronic conditions that they they also have, but if that provider is not uh, addressing those, you're only going to think about what is being addressed. Basically, evaluation and management has a lot to do with leveling out the provider's cognitive work. If they are really focused on one condition and they don't think about the other ones, they don't talk about the other conditions that the patient has, that's when you're going to say, okay, then they're really focused on this one. Um, the other conditions, he's not putting, you know, anything about that. He or she is not putting anything about that. So I'm only going to focus on what is this. So you, you do need to understand what acute conditions are, what chronic conditions are, Chronic conditions are things that are going to be long lasting. They don't go away overnight. Um, sometimes the patient is going to have these forever, right? Acute conditions are acute. They are here today. <laughs> sometimes they're gone tomorrow. And sometimes they last for a little bit, but they run a specific course, okay? And then they're gone. You know, they're not considered long term or chronic, right? So you do need to understand what those things are. Again, you're going to get all of this information here by reading these guidelines. But here in this first column, you're going to have the number and complexity of problems addressed at the encounter. And it's going to tell you based on this, like in the low box, it says two or more self-limited or minor problems or uh, one stable chronic illness or one acute uncomplicated illness or injury or one stable acute illness or one acute uncomplicated illness or injury requiring hospital inpatient or observation level of care. So that's going to be your first box. If you are in the moderate box is one or more chronic uh, illnesses 
with exacerbation, progression, or side effects of treatment. So basically, it's going to be more serious as the levels go up, right? And I'm sorry, I skipped the straightforward. <laughs> I skipped straightforward on y'all. But straightforward is minimal, so one self-limited or minor problem. And it's basically self-limited or minor problem. What is that? That's something that the patient um, is not going to make a difference if they receive treatment, right? Or it's going to be something that is very minor, all right? And again, this video is going way too fast in order for me to explain all that. But that's basically what it is. You can Google uh, straightforward examples and it'll, it'll tell you to, to kind of give you that idea of what they mean. But going back to the moderate, um, it can be one or more chronic illnesses with exacerbation or progression or uh, two or more stable chronic illnesses. And again, how do we define, you know, long-term or chronic or are they stable? It goes back to the provider's documentation. And if you are educating your provider on, you know, have, helping them to understand what is, when they're documenting, we know that they think a certain way, right? And that may be all well and good, but that documentation has to be able to be understood by everybody who sees it, not just by them, but it needs to be understood by another doctor. So if that doctor is not saying that this patient is stable or that this patient's condition is worsening, you know, if they're not using that kind of language and they're just saying, you know, whatever the condition is and then the medication or what their plan for it is, is the patient worsening or not? Are they improving? What's happening here? Because that, that provider may see that patient, something may happen where that provider cannot see that patient again, but the, another doctor has to see that patient, and they're not going to know what the status of this patient's condition is. Is it worsening? Is it getting better? And if a condition is worsening, um, then that, that means that this disease process may be progressing, or something else may be going on that may be aggravating the situation. So again... All of this goes back to you have to understand what these things mean, all right? Um, so before I go down another rabbit hole, <laughs> so we have, um, they need to say that, all right? It has to be in there. And if they're not saying it, then you need to, as their coder, you do need to educate them if there is nobody to educate them. Now, it, some facilities, they do have an educator. So go with whatever your facility says. But for me and my money, uh, I'm going to make sure that the uh, provider understands because I'm their coder. They get educated by me. Okay, that's the bottom line <laughs> is they're going to get educated by me because I'm the one who sees their documentation and I'm the one who's going to know how to help them best, not an educator that doesn't work with them. I'm just saying. So then we have or one undiagnosed new problem with uncertain prognosis. Like if they they find a mass and they don't know what it is again. That's where it's going to fall in right here, right? Um, or one acute illness or uh, systemic sim with systemic symptoms or one acute complicated injury. So these are the things that are going to fall into this category. Remember, all you need is one thing to meet in order to meet that level, right? Um, and then we have the high, and the high is going to say, uh, when we flip this page here, one or more chronic illnesses with severe exacerbation, right? Progression or side effects of treatment or one acute or chronic illness or injury that poses threat to life or bodily function. So again, as you go up in this level, it may be getting more serious. But you can have one level be here and then other levels be here, <laughs> And that's how you're going to be able to level it out, okay? But before I get ahead of myself, <laughs> um, in this middle column is going to be the amount and complexity of data to be reviewed and analyzed. Each unique test, order, or document uh, contributes to the combination of two or combination of three in category one below. So it's going to tell you here, straightforward is minimal or none. Sometimes providers, they just... Don't think about that. You know, if they're ordering a whatever, and they don't put it in the documentation and we don't know, again, they're not going to get credit, okay? Um, limited or the slow level is going to be must meet the requirements of at least one of two of these categories. So here's the category one, which is tests and documentation. 
any combination of two of the following. So it gives you like review of prior external notes from each unique source or um, review of the results of each unique test or ordering of each unique test. So it needs to meet two out of these three in order to count for category one. And all you need to meet limited is one out of these two. Or it could be an assessment requiring an independent historian. And it says for categories of independent his interpretation of tests and discussion of management or test interpretation, see moderate or high. So again, um, if the doctor is having to interpret uh, like radiology and things like that, and they do a, um, a personal interpretation, that's going to bring us up to a moderate level. And the, to get moderate, you're going to need to meet uh, the requirements of at least one out of these three categories. So either it's going to be based on the tests, the documents, or the independent historian, any of these, any combination of three of the following. So they have four listed here. And it's uh, a matter of time. I'm going to speed this up. <laughs> but um, any of these, any combination of the three out of the four, uh, category two is independent uh, interpretation of tests. If they read a radiology read and they say, I independently interpreted this and I saw this, then that makes them eligible for this category two, right? And all you need is one out of these three. Uh, the third option is discussion of management or test interpretation. Discussion of management or test interpretation with external physician or other qualified healthcare professional. Um, appropriate source not uh, separately reported. So it's got to be one out of these three. If it is high, it's going to be, it's going to have to meet two out of these three, right? And so that's going to be extensive. So if there's like a lot of tests that are ordered and interpreted and that kind of thing, but you have to meet each one of these and um, maybe they did an independent interpretation of test and they get two out of three, that could be a high, okay? Um, or if they had to do a discussion, Again, it could also be high there, okay, but you got to meet two out of three. This is one out of three, and this is one, <laughs> um, and this is none, okay? Then we have our risk of complications and or morbidity or mortality of the patient management, right? So we have, in the straightforward, we have minimal risk of morbidity, which means they're not going to pass away if they don't get treatment, right, from additional diagnostic testing or treatment. The low... See, it doesn't have any examples listed, but these examples are not meant to be all inclusive, okay? They do tell you that, that these are not meant to be all inclusive. However, even though it's blank right here, some of the things that would be considered low uh, could be like uh, having to use um, uh, over the counter medications, telling them that, right? or sending them to PT, or sending them to occupational therapy. Those are the types of things um, that that's gonna fall into that low, okay? So any kind of like over-the-counter medications, those kinds of things, that's gonna be in the low, even though it's not here, but that's kind of what they want you to think along those terms. And again, you can Google for examples of those types of, of uh, examples for in here and then here for the moderate and it says these are examples only again they don't want you to think that these are the only things that fall into this category it can be a lot of other things that maybe just weren't thought of uh, but if it can meet because it's similar in nature then think about that right so here is for like where they're doing prescription management right decision regarding minor surgery with identified patient or procedure risk factors, right? Uh, decision regarding elective major surgery without identified um, patient or procedure risk factors. Diagnosis or treatment significantly limited by social determinants of health, all right? So again, more of these definitions and things that you'll understand by reading the guidelines here, guys. And then, of course, we have the high which this is going to be examples only. So monitoring for intensive monitoring for toxicity, um, decision regarding elective major surgery with identified patient or procedure risk factors, 
decision regarding emergency major surgery, decision regarding hospitalization or escalation of hospital level care, decision not to resuscitate or de-escalate uh, care because of poor prognosis, and then diagnosis regarding, um, or decision, sorry, decision regarding potential uh, or parenterial exarm. I'm sorry. <laughs> I really messed that one up, didn't I? Uh, decision regarding parenterial uh, controlled substances. So that's the thing that's going to be on that type of level. So that's going to be like your heavy duty stuff. All right. There's certain things I can't say. I'm not going to say on here. So just so you know, but here's, it's going to explain all of this is going to tell you what does amount and, a com and or complexity of data to be reviewed or analyzed is going to tell you what it means. Um, the risk of complications and morbidity or mortality of the patient management, okay? And then guidelines on selecting a level based on time. And it's going to tell you what is included in time, what is not included in time, and that kind of thing. So knowing where you're, what setting you're coding in is very important. Office or other outpatient services. Here is giving you coding tips. Read these, guys. Read them. This is what's going to help you to understand. A lot of you skip this part and then still have to, the, the thing to say, oh, I don't understand. Did you read it? This is why you have to read, guys. And here's your levels. And your levels are going to tell you exactly in here, like base, if you're going to go based on time, it's going to tell you what, um, what amount of time applies for this level and um, what level of decision making falls for this level, right? Appropriate history and or examination, straightforward medical decision making. So this is going to be a very low level, right? And then you have 99203. This is for office outpatient. And it's going to tell you it's 30 minutes um, for the code selection if you're going to go based on time. And it's going to be a low uh, level of decision making. I'm already running out of time. Gosh, I can't believe how fast the time goes. My gosh. So... It's going to give you here, and then it's going to say establish patient, and it's going to give you these levels here, right? And it's going to tell you when certain levels apply and when they don't. Hospital outpatient um, observation, hospital observation services, and then hospital inpatient uh, care services. It's going to give you more guidance about that. Um, subsequent hospital inpatient or observation care. This is going to be your initial, and this is going to be your subsequent hospital stay. Your hospital discharge services is also going to be here. That's observation, rather. And then there's your discharge codes. So there's your discharge services there, consultations. But guys, take the time to read this stuff. Because, and this is office uh, outpatient consultations. This is the actual codes for those things. Some insurances accept those and some do not. So you have to be really careful when selecting those, okay? So here's your emergency department, and it talks about newer established, and it talks about how that doesn't apply in the ER, right? More coding tips. Uh, here's your first code, your lowest level for the ER, which is 99281. It goes all the way up to 99285. More coding tips. So critical care is going to break down everything about critical care. So read all of these things, guys. And if it doesn't make sense to you, just read it again, all right? But don't, get, don't fall into that trap that, oh, evaluation and management is so scary because it's not. The more you practice with it, and look how small this section is. The more you practice with it, the more proficient that you get with it, the more opportunities that you will have. Because you're not going to just limit yourself to, oh, no, I don't want to apply at this place because they want me to have evaluation and management skills. You have the skills, guys. It's just a matter of getting the practice in. But you have to know what these mean in order to be able to do that. So with that said, I'm going to hurry up <laughs> because I got like three minutes left. But here is the book. Here is the workbook that I recommend. Now, Okay, ignore this because this is 2023, um, but I just haven't ordered the 2024 book because I haven't needed to. But this is the Evaluation and Management Coding Advisor. This is a great workbook from Optum. Optum, this is not an ad for them, but you guys know 
how much I love them. They're very comprehensive. They give lots of fantastic examples of these evaluation and management levels. And then they give you quick tips and then they break down every single chapter about like the code ranges and stuff like that for, and look here is for um, the ER, right? So it's going to give you like the sample documentation and then break it down for you for the uh, 282, the 283, and what does it look like? So some of these, if you invest in these types of books, look at that, more sample documentation. If you invest in these types of books to help you and work through these uh, little quizzes and stuff like that that they have in here, the better off that you'll be. Now, they do have the 2024 editions out. Uh, you can use, you know, older books if you want to. Uh, if you have the 2023 CPT book, because that's all you have right now, but you're ordering the, uh, the 2024 um, Optum book, it's okay, guys, because, again, it's just getting you the practice. Now, Optum is not selling a 2023 anymore <laughs> because we're already in April of 2024. So they're not selling the 2023 editions, but they do have reasonable um, cost for for this book for the 2024 edition. OK, so check it out. Get it. Um, if you can't afford it right now, go to your public library, especially if you live in a big city, you may be able to find this book. You may get lucky and you may find this book. OK, Check it out. See if you have it at your public library. If not, order it from Optum. It is a great investment in you. It's going to help you to better understand because trust me, if you go through this whole book, you'll understand all the settings and you will understand what it takes to meet this. Now, you may not be swift in it. You may not be as proficient in it, but you will have a greater understanding versus running around and not really knowing what to do. I'm telling you, this is how you do it. You practice with this. You review those guidelines. And you look at those e &M tools to see what it all entails. So that way you can start spotting it when you are working through those scenarios. Because it will get easier with time. Okay? And that's just my advice anyway. So, with that said... Um, I hope this kind of gives you some direction, especially if you are studying on your own, uh, like on how to, you know, uh, work through this and learn evaluation and management. It is possible, guys. You know, you just have to put a little bit more effort into it. If you need help, if you are stuck, if you need a tutor, there's a ton of tutors on LinkedIn. My calendar is presently closed um, for all services right now as I am completely booked. Um, I will open up again in September. So if you're interested then, you know, please reach out then. But with that said, um, I hope this helps. And if this video helped you, please like, subscribe, and share. And I will see y'all next time. Bye.